there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to emboss on a transparency. See that? Um, you get that really cool glossy stained glass look, and it's really easy to do as long as you keep a few things in mind. So what I have here is just a regular inkjet transparency. Now the difference between the inkjet transparencies and overhead transparencies is that one side is kind of like a hazy film on it, and that will allow your ink to dry, and the other side is uncoated and just shiny and plain, and that's the side we're going to stamp on. Now what I want to do is ink up this stamp, and this is the Camilla Background by About Art Accents, and I'm actually going to be giving this stamp away on my blog if you go to thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com. Um, I think it's going to be on the May 1st post. I think that's when I'm going to have this up and ready. Um, you can leave a comment on the, uh, on the post with this card and check back in a week. You might have won it. So what I'm going to do is actually put this right on top, the transparency on top of the stamp, because um, sometimes it's hard to get a really good impression um, when you just stamp down on it. So now I know that everything's going to be coming in contact with the ink. And the pigment ink isn't as likely to slip as the dye-based ink, it seems. So it's not sli it's slipping, it's almost like kind of sucking on there, um, with a <laughs> like a vacuum seal or something. So now I'm going to peel this off. I'm going to sprinkle it with embossing powder. I'm using Detail Black. I'm going to give it a really good coating here. And I will be putting the excess back in the jar. But I'm going to set it aside for now so it's a little bit quicker. Flick off the excess. And set this out of the way. And now to heat this up, you want to make sure that you don't keep the gun on the plastic too long. I'm going to be talking loudly as this is going, so I'm just kind of coming over and pulling it back. Heating it up and pulling it back. I'm just starting to see the, um, the embossing powder go black. It's going to start warping the plastic, so that's why I'm pulling it off so I don't put too much heat on any part of the design at one time. You just want to have enough heat that it's going to change um, the powder glossy. It will flatten out as we go along. This is a lot thinner probably than the kind you buy for stamping, but as you can see, as long as you're careful, you can use it. Um, I probably should have dusted this with a little anti-static pouch, but, um, but it's working fine. I don't have too much stray on there. Oops, I got that little corner there I need to do. Hope you can hear me over that gun. It gets a little loud. And it, uh, I think that the um, transparency film does emboss a little quicker than paper. Alright, just give it a good look and shine it around and make sure that you have embossed all of that. It looks pretty good. Oops, I got a, missed a little spot there, so I'm going to heat that up. Just a, all over heat will kind of flatten it back out again. So there, now we've got a nice flat embossed piece. Now we're going to color this, and the reason I had you stamp and emboss on the slick side was because we can use watercolors to color the other side. Or you can use ink, or you could take some, some of your ink and add it to like a metallic ink if you don't have these metallic watercolors. These were six bucks. Um, I don't know where I got them. I've seen them at, I've seen them at stamp shows. I... I think I probably got these um, through Dick Blick or Cheap Joe's or something. So what I'm going to do is actually just um, add a little water to my palette. And I'm just going to go ahead and color. I want the paint kind of thick. I'm just going to color in my design very quickly here. Um, and then we'll actually be able to dry this. You can either leave it to dry or you can dry it with your embossing gun, which is kind of nice. So don't be afraid to try this with vellum. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, try it with vellum. Sure, why not? Because that's also a plastic. Uh, but don't be afraid to try this with your um, with your transparencies. The if you use an overhead transparency, you're probably going to need to use like acrylic paint or something because the um, the ink is not going to dry on those as well. All right. And since we're painting on the back, you don't have to be too neat because um, the paint's only going to show through the clear areas. This is such a pretty stamp. Um, you can do this with whatever stamps you have, but it's nice if you have something with a nice thick black border because then it really looks like stained glass. These uh, metallic watercolors are 
um, really beautiful for this effect too. But you could just use ink, um, watercolors, whatever you have. And um, since we're going to be backing this on a white embossed panel, even if you just use ink or watercolors, it's still going to show up. Because the light is going to go through your embossed panel here, because it's a clear panel, and it's going to bounce off the white of your card, and it's going to um, come back to your eyes as beautifully brilliant color, just like a watercolor painting or a stained glass. Okay, I think I've got almost all my leaves there. In my background, I just want to do some blue. And I'm just, to clean my water brush, I am just squirting out some water and wiping out my scrap paper here. And I like this blue, so I'm just going to go in around and paint the rest. And don't worry if you get on top of any of those black areas. Now, if you're, if you've, um, after you stamped, if you noticed you missed a few spots, after you've embossed it, you can go right over there with a Sharpie, a black Sharpie and fill it in. There's nothing wrong with that. Oops, I think I saw a spot where I missed the, uh, where I missed a leaf. This is terribly riveting, isn't it? I'll pretend I'm Barbara. Ross. Paint the happy little background. Isn't that relaxing? That's me. I'm known for my relaxing videos, my relaxing craft videos. I'm just trying to be quick here and fill it in. Um, actually, this probably would be quicker if it was um, if it had fewer details in it. But this about our accent stamp is really, really pretty. It's nice all the little flowers on there, and it has a really nice, strong Asian design. All right, I'm going to go back in and get those green leaves that I missed. I always miss a couple. As much as, 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 much as I try to get everyone, I always miss a couple. All right, so I'm going to flip it over and show you what we have here. You can see how that kind of has got some nice um, metallic catching the light there. Isn't that pretty? All right, I'm going to actually set this aside and see if it will dry on its own so I can spare you watching me dry it with a heat gun. And we're going to go on to the next part, and that is making the cool photo corners for this card. So what I have here is just a fancy square shape that I punched, but I wanted photo corners, so what I'm going to do is cut it corner to corner, and it's going to give me four cool photo corners. And you could use paper trimmer if you like to make sure you're cutting absolutely straight, but I'm not too worried about that. And then I've got this background that I embossed. I think it's a Doris folder, Doris embossing folder. And I'm going to use some ink just to bring up some of those colors that I used in the card. So I'm just going to do some pink around the edges. I don't want to put color in the middle because um, I really want it white back there so any, any light can reflect off the background and back through my little stained glass panel. Faux stained glass. Really, that's what it is. It's kind of faux stained glass, isn't it? Embossed vellum faux stained glass. I saw a Judy Kins um, demonstrating embossing on vellum at the Heirloom Stamp Show last year, and I had never gotten around to trying it, so I thought, why not? I think she sells much nicer vellum, uh, much nicer uh, acetate for embossing, but this will work. You gotta, you gotta use what you have. You gotta work with what you got. And there's that panel. I'm just going to go and glue these corners on while we're waiting for our background, to, our uh, main focal panel to dry. Love my hot glue gun, of course. And the thing that's nice, um, I always, when before I toss, sometimes you get those small scraps of paper that you're just ready to toss. You don't want to file them because you'll never find them again. I'll punch whatever shapes I can out of them before I toss them. And then it comes in handy when I'm making a card and... You know, I just grabbed this shape out of my punch box and uh, it was all ready to go. So that's a little tip to do with your little scraps of cardstock instead of tossing them out. You get a little bit more out of every piece. And I also want to put a few flowers on and maybe I'll do those green. I think green on green might be nice, a little different than the other one. Let's hot glue those on as well. This is a nice all occasion card. You could use it for Mother's Day, you could use it for a birthday. Um, a lot of times I'll just have a bunch of playing cards and I'll wait and put a sentiment on it when I'm ready to ready to hand it out. Or just keep them blank. Just send a just just thinking of you, just because card. Those are always nice to get too. It's always nice to get a card when you're not expecting it. All right, and that can be adhered right to my card base. Like so. And what the well, I'll use double sided tape for that. A lot of times I get my card bases put together kind of crooked because I, I rush it with the hot glue. 
I like both sides of that. I like the this side of the embossed panel too. It looks like a quilt. That'd be pretty to do on a pattern paper or some origami paper. It'd look like a quilted piece after that. There we go. And our card base is ready to rock, isn't it? There. Might need to trim a little bit off the edge because it's a little thicker there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, back to this. Let's have a look. See, we're going to heat it up a little bit because it's still damp. And this is a reverse side. It's still damp in a few spots. So just zap, zap it for a couple seconds here to dry it off. I could probably blot at that if I wanted to. Remember, try not to put heat. It's kind of like when you use a hair dryer and you're moving it. It's kind of what you want to do when you're working with um, acetate or vellum plastic because uh, you don't want to warp it. Just got this one little bead of ink in the middle that doesn't want to dry on me. Oh, that will just have to... Well, let's see if that will dry by the time I cut this out. So I'm just going to cut out evenly, and I'm still holding the reverse side up because I don't want that bead of ink to drop onto my project, but I'm just too darn impatient to uh, stand there and keep drying it. Again, you're looking at the back side. See, the front side's very lovely. Isn't it? Isn't it? There we go. Trim, trim, trim we go. I should probably edit this stuff out, but I've got a feeling that I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to pop it up live on YouTube. Well, since my adhesive isn't really going to touch that part with the wet ink, I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. Normally, I would just wait and go do something else for a while. But... We're doing a video here, and we're already at 11 minutes, so we gotta we gotta pick up the pace. Uh, and I got these little foam adhesive squares, just to give a little more depth to our project. Actually, it's not bad though. When you think about it, you've done an embossed card in like 12 minutes. That that's not bad at all. I don't think. Okay, so I'm justifying my long video there. I'm justifying my laziness to edit out the um, embossing parts. Oh my gosh, I can I can justify my laziness, can't I? All right, and I'm just gonna stick that on there. And there you have it. We have a little embossed card. I will trim away the thicker edge there, but I'm not gonna worry about it now. And there's one that's got a little ribbon on it. Embossing on vellum or acetate. Why do I keep calling it vellum? It's acetate. <laughs> embossing on clear sheets of plastic. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.